In this video, we will study the pathological features of diffuse goiter and multinodular goiter. Firstly, we will study the pathology of diffuse goiter. So, on the gross specimen, as the name implies, the enlargement of thyroid gland is diffuse and symmetric. And on microscopic picture, you see two stages. The first stage is hyperplastic stage and the other stage is involution stage. In hyperplastic stage, the picture will be like that of Graves' disease, in which there is increase in size of cells from cuboidal to columnar and increase in number of cells which causes crowding of cells with formation of papilla. So, in hyperplastic stage, you see increase in height of cells to columnar cells and you see crowding of cells with papilla formation. Now the second stage of diffuse goiter is involution stage. In involution stage, the thyroid follicular cells become inactive and they stop making thyroid hormone from colloid. And now as the follicular cells are not using colloid to make thyroid hormones, so colloid accumulates and causes distension of follicles. So you see distended follicles. And this colloid also compresses the lining epithelium and the epithelium becomes flat. So overall you see distended follicles with flat lining epithelium. Now let's summarize the both stages of diffuse goiter. First stage was hyperplastic stage in which you see tall columnar cells and you see crowding of cells with formation of papilla. The second stage was called involution stage in which there was distension of follicles by colloid and there was flattening of epithelium. Such a colloid rich goiter in involution stage is also known as colloid goiter. So involution stage is also known as colloid goiter. Now we will study the pathological features of multinodular goiter. Multinodular means that there will be presence of multiple nodules on thyroid gland. So on gross specimen you see multinodular enlargement that is asymmetric. Asymmetric means that some of the nodules will be large in size and some may be small in size. Secondly the cut surface show irregular nodules with brown gelatinous colloid. And the third important point is that in multinodular goiter, the thyroid gland shows secondary changes. Now what these secondary changes are? Firstly, what happens is that the enlarging nodules of thyroid gland invade their blood vessels and result in hemorrhage. So first secondary change you see is hemorrhage. Now as there is hemorrhage, so there might be some hemorrhagic necrosis. And to fill up these areas of hemorrhagic necrosis, fibrosis tissue develops, fibrotic tissue develops which fills up the space of hemorrhagic necrosis. So along with hemorrhage, you see fibrosis. And you know that where there is fibrosis and necrosis, there will be calcification, dystrophic calcification. So another secondary change is dystrophic calcification. And with these changes, the normal tissue of thyroid gland will become cyst-like in consistency. So you also see cystic change. So overall, the secondary changes are hemorrhage, calcification, fibrosis and cystic change. Now for microscopic features of multinodular goiter, the keywords to remember are colloid rich goiter plus secondary changes. Colloid rich goiter plus secondary changes. The colloid rich goiter means that there will be abundant colloid with flattened epithelium. And the secondary changes means that there will be development of hemorrhages, fibrosis, calcification and cystic changes as we discussed in the gross features. So this concludes our discussion on pathology of diffuse goiter and multinodular goiter.